Hello everybody, it's me, Ghost Critic, and I'm here with a Friday roundup of all my thoughts and opinions on the books that I picked up on Wednesday. If you've seen my comic book pull list, you'll already know what's going to be contained herein. So we're going to kick straight off, because there aren't that many books this week to talk about, though I probably will go on a bit as I always do. So what's at the bottom of the heap? It's, um, oh. <laughs> it's Batman Eternal, um, issue number 50. Can you believe I've continued to pick this up for 50 issues, for 50 weeks? Um, it was marginally better than last week. If you saw my video last week, I ranted, raved, got very angry. I was pissed. This is marginally better, but it's a case of too little, too late. And I still, by the end of this issue, don't trust anything that is inside it. What annoys me most about the reveal at the end is that Batman did no detective work and solved anything. Batman is supposed to be the greatest detective on earth. That is what his moniker has been for for decades. He worked nothing out. He just followed a little trail that he was led on, led on this little merry dance, and we get to that final page and we find out who supposedly has been the master puppeteer behind everything. As I said, still don't trust anything I'm told anymore. What this issue certainly did was raise many more or didn't answer many questions um, and just had me raising my eyebrows at certain points. Uh, not least, how did the penguin escape? The last we saw Penguin was James Gordon dragging him into a cell, having it locked behind him, um, supposedly about to beat the crap out of the Penguin and um, extract some information that could have potentially helped the Batman. But when we meet him now, Penguin's gone. He's flying across Gotham River uh, in a speedboat with Killer Croc. Um, did I miss an issue? I wish I had, but I know I haven't. Um, there's still the whole tying up of what is Bruce Wayne. Uh, what is the link there? If you remember a few issues back, spoiler revealed that Bruce Wayne and the clue master had had this meeting and he was behind it all um that to my knowledge and i try and forget every issue of batman eternal i read um, it still hasn't really been explained what is what that is all about and obviously the the big question at the reveal at the end can it really can it really be him is it that obvious. I still would love the actual puppeteer to be, say, Alfred in a kind of twisted plan to kind of reunite the Bat family after um, death of the family. That would make a much better twist um, than what we have here. Uh, with only, is it a couple more issues to go? There is so much left to resolve that within two, three issues, I can't believe they're going to do this unless they do um, a, like a bumper-sized issue um, and at least give us some answers to lead on to the next volume, which no, I am not going to buy. I will just watch um, Bat Josh, Joshua Hayes videos if I am even in the slightest bit interested in what comes after this because I've had enough. Spread issue number six comes to the end of its first arc, I guess, uh, because it's kind of meandered. It's been this kind of 
one note storytelling from um, Justin Jordan and it just feels like an overly long introduction to our post-apocalyptic winter world kind of um, scenario. This issue just gave us more fighting, more blood, more guts. Um, there's little kind of snippets of creepiness the clergyman guy um, especially after he loses his eyes in this as well uh, it is kind of creepy you have that cliched kind of action movie overlong fight scene where um, it can't these guys fighting can't possibly be still standing yet they still do they still keep pummeling away at each other um, despite all the kind of the violence, the um, the beatings that they give each other. And while the ending does kind of hint at potential new plot lines and storylines, I don't honestly know where Jordan is going with this title. And I'm, I'm just kind of... I'm just kind of on the ride with it it's 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 nothing spectacular uh, there are other image titles that would wa wouldn't wipe its ass with this um but there's something about it that makes me come back month after month um but i am not overwhelmed by it by any means um next month they're bringing out volume one um uh, in trade and then we have to wait till May for issue 7. So it's taking yet another kind of break. Because it has seemed to come out pretty sporadically. Um, it seems to continually want to take a month or maybe two months off at a time. Uh, which, given the package that we get when it does come out, makes me feel, what have they been working on? Alex and Ada issue number 13 and while the robots of the future may be kind of like far advanced um, technology wise they still aren't very smart. Um, in last issue we had the death of um, Alex's grandmother um, this picks up shortly after where um, Alex and Ada are back at home and they're kind of taking stock of the situation where they are while uh, Alex is obviously upset about his grandmother's death. Ada is trying to... she is wrestling with human emotions. Um, when she was found out by Alex's friend that, you know, she is sentient, uh, she had this kind of overwhelming, violent tendencies. And while people around the world are worried that, yes, robots will get sentient, uh, but they um, are prone to violence, it, the situation that she'd been put in was a very human experience. Um, it was, in a sense, domestic violence um, and she was feeling endangered so she was trying to protect herself like any um, person would. Now, she gets a message from fellow sentient robot Sue who they kind of parted waves when um, they were they were taking a jaunt around um, Washington DC, remember back in those issues, um, and it's kind of a, a a group message to come back to the forum. Um, she's got news. She's escaped from the FBI, and I'm like straight away, come on, this is a trap. Um, but they are blind, oblivious or this is kind of a little bit of a plot contrivance to um, push um, the tension building in this title. And it certainly is building. As, of course, the kind of virtual forum that they've all meted up in is raided by um, the FBI. Um, fortunately, Alex and Ada managed to escape, but the FBI are hot on their trails as Alex and Ada know they're on their way to the house and have 
supposedly left um, and are on the lam. Um, and there is this kind of outside storyline, I guess you'd call it, um, where we have the, the tension building between um, pro-robotic sentience and anti-robots um, building across the country. And this is all explained to us within in news stories. And it just kind of ramps up the, the tension here, the excitement. And... I would love this book to end on a, a kind of happy note where Alex and Ada can go and live that kind of happily ever after storyline. I don't want this to end in a very miserable, depressing way because, you know, sometimes life isn't depressing, isn't bad. Bad things don't happen to everyone. Make this a positive finish, please. Almost getting my pick of the week. And if you want to see what my pick of the week is, uh, watch the video straight after this. It's Stray Bullets, Sunshine and Roses issue two. And this is, I guess, a kind of another insular storyline. Um, and it's based loosely around about what happened to me last night. We have a new character, Orson, and his kind of day in the life um, as he pieces together um, a, a store robbery, how he got involved in one, and basically how he got crabs. And also trying not to fall in love with one of our character regulars, Beth. Now the great thing about this issue, because if you'd seen my video on Wednesday, I said with Stray Bullets, it's a fantastic kind of slice of life, gritty storylines that often end incredibly depressing. However, this issue was genuinely funny for so many reasons. We have Orson, who is this kind of all round nice guy. He is the guy that you're going to go to and you know he's going to help you out no matter what else he has going on in his life. And this leads him to kind of taking back this kind of crazed kid who's been um, running around a kind of booze drugged filled party. Um, it uh, He tries to bring Beth and um, her friend back together again because they've had a falling out. Um, there's more gun shootouts in a strip joint. He gets drunk yet again, um, expresses his love for Beth despite only knowing uh, for like mere weeks. Um, and just, just when you think this is going to end happily, and you're ready for the big depressing twist and you think you're going to get it and then you don't. It leaves you for the first time that I've read this with a laugh. Um, <laughs> David Lapham, great storyteller. Um, as I said, the slice of life storylines with a more gritty edge just hook me with every issue. For anybody who hasn't read Stray Bullets before, just dive in. These aren't kind of overreaching story arcs. Before these two, this miniseries and the one that came out before, I'd read maybe three or four issues of, and they were sporadic issues of the main title. Um, and I have no problem jumping into these new series. You don't need to know all the characters uh, and what has happened to them in the past. Um, though they do have these recurring favourites. You don't need to. These are just great stories. So, Stray Bullets, almost pick of the week, just not quite. And that's my particularly short video for the week. Um, I have my pick of the week video coming up next. Um, obviously, if you see my Wednesday video, you're going to know what this is already. Um, and I will give you my reasons why. Um, if this is your first time here and you've liked what you've seen, I've done this for almost five years now. I'm 600 videos 
um, and going. So hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out any more. Um, give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And in the comment section below, let me what you let me know what you thought about the books that I've read and also some books that I didn't read or uh, maybe should have read, read or I'm lucky not to have read this week. Until you see me next in the Pick of the Week video, bye-bye.